It's the Real News Network, and I'm Ben Norton. The United States government has secretly filed criminal charges against Julian Assange, the founder and editor of the whistleblowing journalism organization WikiLeaks. This has huge implications for journalism around the world and could be an enormous blow to the freedom of the press here in the U.S. because Assange is not a U.S. citizen and he has not done journalistic work inside the U.S. So the U.S. government is trying to criminally prosecute a journalist who is not even a citizen for publishing confidential government documents, which all major newspapers do, including the New York Times and the Washington Post. Assange has never been charged with a crime, but he's been trapped in the embassy of Ecuador inside London since 2012. He has feared that the British government would extradite him to the U.S. for prosecution, where he is afraid he could face the death penalty. In 2016, a United Nations human rights panel determined that Assange is being arbitrarily detained under international law and that he must be freed and is due compensation. But still, in the past two years since that UN ruling, Assange has remained stuck in the Ecuadorian embassy. And now corporate media outlets are spreading stories about Assange that WikiLeaks maintains are totally false. On November 27th, the British newspaper The Guardian published a story claiming that Donald Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, met Assange inside the Ecuadorian embassy three times for secret talks in 2013, 2015, and in mid-2016. The Guardian report implied that this was related to WikiLeaks' publication of leaked Democratic Party documents and emails. WikiLeaks actually says this story is completely false and has pledged to sue The Guardian for it. WikiLeaks is currently raising money for a lawsuit. Assange and Manafort both say that the story is fake, and even The Washington Post has actually cast doubt on The Guardian report. Well, now a former diplomat in the Ecuadorian embassy in London is also speaking out. Fidel Narvaez is the, told the British news website, The Canary, that the story is false. And today here we are joined by Fidel Narvaez to discuss this scandal. He is an Ecuadorian human rights activist and former diplomat. Fidel Narvaez served as consul and then first secretary at the Ecuadorian embassy in London from 2010 until July 2018. Thanks for joining us, Fidel. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. So can you respond first? There was a lot of things we can discuss here. Um, we can talk about the new Ecuadorian president, Lenin Moreno, has been pushing for Assange to leave the embassy after he was granted uh, uh, refuge there by the previous president, Rafael Correa. But before we talk about that conflict, let's specifically talk about this Guardian report, which you, Assange, and WikiLeaks and Manafort all say is a fake report. Uh, the Guardian also has come under attack because it disguised the fact that the story was actually co-written by Fernando Villavicencio, who is an anti-Correa opposition activist uh, who has worked closely with the U.S. government, and Villavicencio himself has been repeatedly accused of fabrication. In fact, in 2014, the Ecuadorian public news agency Andes reported that Via Vicencio doctored an official government document and that The Guardian published it as a supposed news without verifying it. So do you think that this is another case where The Guardian has not verified the story and has published fake information? Yeah, the latest uh, Guardian publication about the false visit of Mr. Man of the Embassy fabrication. Um, I'm, I'm surprised because the the big implication that such a uh, story has, but I'm not that surprised that The Guardian is again uh, fabricating stories uh, on Anch and Wikileaks. Uh, the sources that you have um, mentioned they have been used previously by The Guardian in other stories that um, I remember challenging them as, as, as part of the embassy that was part of my job. Um, and uh, I can especially refer to the previous one when they fake completely. I suppose 
a Russian plan to smuggle Julian Assange from the embassy. In that story, they uh, named me as uh, the supposed contact with Russians, with Moscow, is a, another fabrication from The Guardian, and, and it's disgusting, really. And can you talk more about the previous reports along with this report? Uh, the Guardian, what's interesting is that in the digital version of this report, it disguised the fact that this story had three co-authors. The digital version only shows Luke Harding and Dan Collins. However, in the print version of the story, uh, it actually showed that there were three co-authors. The third was Via Vicencio, who is this Ecuadorian activist who was previously strongly opposed to the government of Rafael Correa, um, which was now replaced by the current president, Lenin Moreno. Um, and as I mentioned, previously, Ecuadorian public news have accused um, Via Vicencio of publishing doctored information. So if this has happened in the past, why would The Guardian continue using this person as a critical source? And a photo on Twitter shows Luke Harding and Dan Collins, in fact, meeting with Via Vicencio inside Quito, Ecuador. So it's very clear that he is one of the main sources. Yeah, yeah, most probably he is one of the main sources. And the sources of that source, uh, I assume, uh, is the security company that used to be in charge of the security of the embassy, who was contracted by the intelligence services in Ecuador. And they have been pretty hostile to Julian Assange during those years, producing very um, misrepresentations uh, in reports about the day-to-day -day in the embassy, um, trying to misrepresent uh, Julian's stay uh, in, in the embassy. And this latest uh, fabrications, they have clearly a political uh, aim. Uh, it's a clear, clear uh, attempt to uh, link uh, Assange WikiLeaks to a Russia collusion uh, and Trump administration, which uh, I don't think I don't think there are grants for that at all. Yeah, and let's talk Why about. Why the Guardian keeps using the Vicencio and those sources is a question for the Guardian. But uh, I can tell you that the Guardian is processing my complaint because I'm a, I'm, I'm complaining about defamation. It's, it's, it's not an easy thing to cope with in the UK if a major newspaper uh, accuses you of uh, plotting with uh, Russian diplomats or Russian intelligence. So uh, the Guardian was already processing that complaint and they went ahead with uh, the story of Manafort, which I don't think they will be able to substantiate. And I think we're going to see a, a lawsuit by WikiLeaks. And something that you pointed out in your interview with The Canary, which is a British news website that reported on how you were calling this story false, uh, you pointed out that the London Embassy of Ecuador is extremely surveilled. I mean, this is one of the most highly surveilled places really in the world. So there is video footage and meticulous documentation of everyone who enters and exit exits the embassy. Also, the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Glenn Greenwald has pointed this exact fact out that if this story were true, we should have video and photo evidence. Of course, we don't have any video or photos of Manafort supposedly entering the embassy three times. So c can you respond to that point as well? There's uh, video footage and pictures of every single person that enters that embassy in the last uh, six years. Since Julian Assange took refugee at our embassy, um, the, the whole embassy is surveilled by, not by the Ecuadorian security cameras that record 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, every single movement in there, but the exterior of the embassy is also uh, surveilled by other cameras, not just the normal cameras that exist in London, but we are completely sure that the neighborhood buildings, they have surveilling cameras 
uh, spying on Ecuador, registering every single um, visitor, every single uh, movement. There are previous occasions when uh, other controversial visitors, to say, uh, have been uh, reported by exterior cameras. Is, is it impossible that anybody will enter that embassy without being, uh, without leaving a clear record? Uh, it's impossible. And, and the, the report's claiming that this Mr. Manafort was there not just three times, four times, if you read carefully the report. Uh, and there's no, there's no record of that. And it's not just the cameras. Every visitor needs to be approved by the head of mission. Normally, the ambassador or whoever is in charge of the embassy. To be approved, the security personnel draws a profile of every visitor. And there's a record of that. And every visitor needs to register, needs to leave a copy of the identification uh, with the embassy. The Guardian doesn't have anything of that. Um, and it won't have, because it's, it's a fabrication, it's, it's false and disgusting. And in addition to this story, we also saw a report on December 3rd in the New York Times, which said that uh, in mid-2017, Manafort met with Moreno, Lenin Moreno, the new president of Ecuador, to try to work out a deal uh, Moreno wanted debt relief from the U.S. and potential Chinese investment. And in return, Manafort offered to help extradite uh, Assange to the U.S., to, to help hand over Assange to the U.S. for prosecution. Um, do you think that this story is true? And if it is true, why do you think that Lenin Moreno has turned on Assange when the previous president, Rafael Correa, had previously given refuge to the WikiLeaks editor in the first place. The story about Manafort uh, meeting with Lenin Moreno is true. Uh, it's not a secret. It was reported normally and immediately. Mr. Moreno met with many people before he took presidency. The, the, when they met, Moreno was not president yet. He was president-elected apparently, uh, and, and it's true, and the sources that The Guardian is using for the fabrications immediately starting uh, lucubrating uh, connections between Manafort and WikiLeaks or Assange and, and not senses. Uh, the reports that we have is that uh, it was Moreno who put Assange on the table in that uh, meeting with, with, with Manafort. According to the reports that, that, uh, that, that we have, um, Manafort just basically listened, and uh, Moreno doesn't want to have Assange uh, at the embassy. He never wanted, not even when he was uh, vice president of, 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 of Korea. So uh, why the change on... on, on of his policies, because uh, he has um, basically betrayed the uh, movement and the people who elected him under a concrete uh, political project, and he's implemented the project of the opposition. And the project of the opposition is a very pro-US pro um, project. Moreno has in fact, reopen the doors for U.S. in, in, in Ecuador. Uh, now we have uh, U.S. military planes operating again in Ecuador. Uh, that's against our constitution, for example. And uh, the asylum to Julian Assange was granted by President Correa, who is right now the main political enemy of uh, Moreno. So uh, they will want to, 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 to finish with Assange Asalo, and they are doing everything possible to do that. Yeah, and then finally, the most recent report, an update on this, is that on Thursday, December 6th, we saw that, the, that Moreno says now that he has worked with Britain, and Britain has assured 
that it will not extradite Assange to the U.S. And Moreno is now openly, publicly calling for Assange to leave the Ecuadorian embassy in London, insisting that if Assange leaves, he will not be sent to the U.S. Do you think that this is true, that the, that the British government will secure his safety? Well, uh, what Lenin Moreno is claiming is not something uh, new. And there's a, a key point on this that we need to understand. Political asylum is not equivalent to protecting you from the electrical chair, from the death penalty. Polit political asylum is protecting your rights, integral. So, if there is a risk of Julian Assange being sentenced to uh, to life sentence, to spend his life in prison, that's absolutely unacceptable. If there is a risk of Julian Assange being sentenced to 30, 40 years in a security prison, as Chelsea Manning was uh, was uh, condemned. Uh, that's absolutely unacceptable. That's why Julian Assange has political asylum from Ecuador to protect his rights. So the UK has claimed that from the very beginning, in year 2012, saying that in the case of the risk of death penalty, they won't extradite a person to a country where death penalty is, is in place. So that's not, that's that's nothing that nothing new, uh, but it's that's uh, unacceptable if now Lenin Moreno wants to uh, ask Assange to leave the embassy because supposedly he had reached an agreement the, the, with the the UK. There's no agreement. That's something that was always there. We always knew, and it's unacceptable. Well, we'll have to end our conversation there. We were joined by Fidel Narvaez, who is an Ecuadorian human rights activist and a former diplomat. He served as consul and then first secretary at the Ecuadorian embassy in London from 2010 until July 2018. Thanks for joining us, Fidel. For The Real News Network, I'm Ben Norton.